Disabling effects is a good technique for making a game playable and stereoscopic, but of course it's uh, not perfect. Uh, there are going to be some times when we run into effects that really cannot be legitimately disabled without damaging the game uh, itself. So then you have to make that uh, decision of uh, which is worse, the effect being missing or whether the game is having uh, glitches in 3D. Uh, sometimes uh, either uh, neither choice is particularly good. So uh, in this game, uh, if you've made it to the uh, lava effect, you uh, probably have noticed that uh, it's annoyingly broken. Uh, it makes that part of the game uh, almost unplayable. You can get past it as far as that goes, but it certainly uh, removes a lot of the enjoyment from the game. Uh, let's take a look at that with a, a screenshot that I made here. So uh, if you can do uh, cross-eyed viewing on this, you can actually see uh, how terrible this looks in 3D. Uh, that haloing around the uh, edge of the gun uh, and around the edge of the uh, uh, lava there uh, is uh, quite noticeable because it's uh, very bright and it makes a, a serious problem as far as uh, playing the game. So this is one of those where we don't really have a good uh, use for this particular effect because uh, this makes it very difficult to play. Now, uh, if we disable it using our technique that we uh, just uh, did before where we disabled it, uh, in this uh, code here. This is our lava effect. I've already done the hunting for the shader and I've gotten it uh, in the uh, code here. So I've added the uh, constants down here and disabled it the same way as we, ha as we have before. So uh, code-wise it's the same. Now um, if you actually look at the disabled uh, characteristic, so now you can see that the disabling definitely worked. Uh, it got rid of the annoying uh, lava effect, uh, but it has the unfortunate side effect that it actually gets rid of everything and so that at the bottom of the ramp there is sure death if you step into the lava. Now there's a skull and crossbones uh, plaque that's further up the ramp, but uh, if you don't happen to notice the skull and crossbones and step in the lava, then you'll die. So this is a good example of where we don't really have a very good choice uh, for uh, just disabling the effect. We actually need to fix it somehow because it's not really playable with it actually the way that it stands and uh, being disabled actually damages the game almost worse than having the uh, 3D effect actually uh, broken. So uh, with that in mind, the uh, idea is that we're actually going to experiment and see if we can find a way to make this a little bit better uh, so that we don't have to have it in one of those two bad, po uh, bad possibilities. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into the uh, game here, and we're going to start by experimenting on the uh, pixel shader that's actually in the game. That's uh, this pixel shader that we uh, started with here, so the disabling is working fine, but uh, clearly it's not exactly what we want. So if we uh, switch back to our shader, uh, this guy's actually in the uh, correct path already. He's uh, been loaded, and uh, we can do F10 on him. So we're going to try and do some experiments on here uh, to see what we can uh, find out. So uh, based on our discussion for um, how uh, pixel shaders and vertex shaders actually work, uh, one of the key aspects that you want to look at for a particular uh, shader is the uh, input and output section of the, of the shader. So input and output for uh, programming is almost always a, an important aspect, uh, and that's what uh, these sections are going to be. Uh, so these are the uh, inputs and the uh, outputs for this particular shader. Uh, the outputs are not specified in the pixel shader, but these are the uh, inputs. So uh, we know that we've got a uh, V0 parameter coming in, a V1, is a, and these are all texture coordinates of uh, different forms. And yes, these texture coordinates uh, are uh, similar and related to the uh, textures that we were talking about uh, earlier. Uh, now these are coordinates that actually come from the vertex shader, and so the coordinates come in and uh, are going to be used as the uh, location to like decide what the pixels are going to be. So now let's take a, a, a quick example here. So now these are called samplers, uh, and the samplers uh, do different things based on uh, uh, whatever they actually are going to be sampling. So like in this case, uh, S4 is a texture 2D, and we can see that there are three different ones there uh, as far as the uh, texture shaders go. So now, uh, if we look at S4 as an example, S4 is going to be doing this texture load instruction. Uh, texture load loads uh, that sampler and then decides what the pixel is going to be, and it adds it uh, to uh, whatever the uh, previous pixels were to decide what the color is going to be. So essentially, these are textures, multiple ones, maybe three textures. You can see the lava moving past itself in multiple ways, like some moves left, some moves forward. So these are multiple textures that are partially transparent that are uh, painted onto the same triangles. And so then uh, at the end of the uh, that moment in time, it decides what the actual color is going to be. So 
Uh, we don't know for sure, but it's sort of likely that this texture load is loading one of those lava photographs onto the triangles and then deciding what it uh, is going to actually look like at the end of the story. Okay, so that's the basic premise of like what you can look at uh, structure-wise uh, in terms of the uh, actual shader. So uh, let me go ahead and run the game. Okay, here we've loaded the mighty ball. We're about to go down the little hallway where it's dangerous, according to this plaque. Now, we come down here and we can see that our lava has, in fact, been disabled. And it's extremely dangerous here, but it's very hard to tell because our lava is missing. Uh, we can only see the heat waves coming up off of it. Here's what the lava actually looks like when it's running. Now you can see how terrible this is in uh, stereoscopic with the uh, halo fringing around the gun and around the edge of the wall. Uh, it's especially nice that it's extra bright. Um, so this is the uh, problem child. Now we're going to go take a look and see what we can do to uh, maybe improve this. Um, because neither of those scenarios seems very viable. Uh, that's uh, maybe slightly better, at least as far as the 3D goes, but uh, sure would be nice if we could keep that enabled. Here's the actual shader that we're looking at. This is the pixel shader that I've already saved off for us. Uh, it's under the boards in the hexagonal puzzle. And uh, this is the lava shader. Uh, it's already been set up for doing the disable with the uh, toggle, of course. And we're going to actually take a look and see what we can find in the regular body of the code here to see if there's anything that we can do to actually improve this like scenario. So uh, based on our previous discussion for uh, about how shading works and how uh, the pixel shader works on triangles, let's take an example of uh, Texture 2D here that actually is part of the input, uh, and this is called uh, Sampler 4. Now samplers uh, aren't uh, significant for us except that they are the piece that actually samples a particular texture, a particular photograph essentially, and decide which of the many pixels in the photograph to put onto the triangle. So in this case, the sampler here is uh, this line where uh, it's the uh, texture load of that, of that sampler. So it's going to essentially take uh, whatever that photograph is and put it into R0, which is then added to uh, previous R0, which was calculated further upstream with multiple texture loads. So we can see there are other texture loads that were happening as uh, time goes by in this shader. And uh, this is probably because there are multiple layers of textures that are being applied to that one uh, triangle to actually put, put in that effect. So in our case here, we're looking at the uh, sampler 4. We don't know what it means or what piece it might be, but we can experiment with it to get maybe a rough idea of like what's going on with it. So uh, the idea here is, is that uh, we're just going to uh, disable pieces of it and see what the effect is on the screen. So in this case, what if we disable this load of, uh, of uh, R0? So uh, let's uh, comment out this uh, texture load. And so this texture load is not actually going to run, and that means that this R0 isn't going to actually change. Uh, so R0 won't change for this particular uh, add operation, and let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and switch back to the game. Now it's live. If I press F10, so you can see that it changed uh, subtly, but it definitely wasn't uh, an exact fix. We still have the broken edges, but it got darker as opposed to uh, actually fixing anything. So it's interesting. Uh, it definitely had an effect, but not what we were looking for. So let's come back here, and uh, let's go ahead and uncomment that. But then we're going to add a comment out here that said, uh, made it darker, um, just so that we know, uh, you know, maybe some slight piece of, like, what's actually happening with the, uh, with the code here. So let's look for another texture load. Uh, I'm going to skip past this one because uh, it's in an if statement, uh, and uh, uh, we'll come back to this one later. Um, so uh, texture load here for uh, S3. So let's go ahead and comment this one out. So sampler 3 and see what we can get off of this one. Now this uh, skip list mechanism uh, happens when you're typing uh, keys on the keyboard. Uh, and uh, it's uh, actually s turning off a bunch of shaders. So you need to s clear the skip list with whatever the particular key is that will actually make it work. In my case, it's uh, insert. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to turn this uh, back on with our uh, alt key. So everything looks good in 3D. Okay, so now I'm doing F10 to reload. And it changed it again. So now this one is uh, more red, if you will. Uh, maybe uh, not exactly sure what the right way to describe that uh, as far as that goes. Uh, it didn't solve the problem, but uh, interesting. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uncomment that and try that again just to see what uh, it changes back to. F10 again. 
So it definitely made it uh, more red. Uh, not exactly sure uh, what that means, but uh, made it more red. Doesn't seem exactly related to what we're interested in. All right, keeping going. We're going to go ahead and do the next one. So this one is for uh, S3, the sampler 3. Again, some small change, no big change. So that one we're going to say is uh, made it uh, darker as well. Okay, next texture load is going to be this one. So we'll comment that one out. So the, we're basically just saying that the uh, R0 is not going to change uh, for their downstream. Same as before. Sometimes when you come back in, it uh, switches the uh, constant. I'm not sure why. I think that's a bug. Okay, F10. Okay, interesting. Uh, didn't fix it exactly, but it had a fairly dramatic change on it. Uh, so we definitely still have uh, fringing at the edges uh, and a uh, halo around the gun. And it made it, uh, I don't know, I guess it made the uh, top layer brighter. Uh, so this looks like there are multiple layers. You can see multiple layers going past each other. One moving away from us, one moving toward us that's underneath of it that's, uh, you can see through the transparent one. And then maybe a third one that's uh, fast up toward the edge. And the one that's up toward the edge seems to be the one that's actually a problem for us. Definitely multiple layers. Okay, so that didn't work. Uh, uncomment that guy, but let's say this one uh, made the top layer brighter. Okay, so that's not it. Got a few more to try. So I uh, hope you're getting the idea here of like what we're actually trying to accomplish. So this is just experimenting. We don't know anything about what we're doing. This is hacking at the purest form of hacking where uh, we're just experimenting with the uh, code that we don't know anything about, trying to see if we can get just a tiny shred of information about what might be impacting it and what we could do to make it, make it work it better. So uh, going back in, got our kookiness again. This one, uh, so that one actually is doing two. It's uh, uncommenting the previous one and commenting out the next guy. Uh, that's okay to do two at once as long as you don't get confused. So I would say uh, no effect at all uh, as far as this one goes. I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that and let's try it again as a uh, F10 reload. Yeah, so no effect at all uh, for that particular shader. So. There's going to be any n a number of times when uh, you'll get that sort of thing where you can't tell uh, anything about what happens. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, comment out the next one. Always make sure that you save. Uh, I'm saving with the keyboard, but if you don't save, of course, then nothing happens. F10. Ah, interesting. Uh, kind of went all green this time uh, and definitely got darker. So uh, that one's some sort of related to the uh, color of... Uh, that didn't affect our edge. The edge is actually the biggest problem. The rest of it seems fine. Uh, location is fine also. Okay, so uh, not the right one. Uh, went green, dark. Okay, let's try the next texture load. So this is a uh, sampler three. So uh, the reason I'm going for these samplers is because these are all different textures that are actually going to be applied. Uh, another way to go about it would be uh, no, I guess that is the right way to go about it. So uh, the texture loads are coming in from these. Okay, so we're going to do this line here, comment it out. Sampler 3 in this case. Now this is going to take off the uh, green and add something else. And I'd say it went back to just normal. So that one uh, I would submit has no effect at all. We'll try uh, uncomment it, save, switch back, F10. Uh, moved it, but uh, I would say it didn't actually change it. No color change, but uh, it looked like it changed the uh, location slightly. So that one is uh, maybe interesting because it, it uh, moved to the, uh, the surface somehow. So that could be related because it uh, moved it. That's the most promising one so far. Go back into the next one. And our crazy things turned off again. Okay, F10. Uh, interesting. So that changed the actual fringing uh, to be all black. So that definitely is related to the uh, piece that we're interested in because it went all black as opposed to uh, as opposed to uh, fixing it. Um, so uh, previously it was uh, essentially all white, uh, too bright. Now it's too dark. 
which also suggests that we won't be able to fix this particular thing by disabling it because uh, disabling it will uh, make it all uh, all dark in this particular case. Uh, well, no, we can try something there, I guess. Uh, that's an interesting one, at least. That one uh, is much much closer to being something uh, useful. So this is uh, made the edge dark, promising. So that one is actually uh, relatively promising as far as that goes. Okay, so uh, since we're almost at the end, I'm going to go ahead and do this last one here. This texture load. Let's see what we can get off of that one. Okay, that one uh, didn't seem to do anything and also didn't put the other one back, so that's not uh, working like I would expect. Let's see, how does this work? Did I not save? Uh, I should try. Okay, I'm going to put it back to normal. F10. Okay, so that's a reload, so that actually worked okay. So uh, it looks like maybe when I do this instruction that it doesn't work properly because uh, it introduces a bug into the code, and so the code no longer compiles. Oop, got our skip list again. Some of these things uh, with the Helix uh, mod debugger are just confusing and no idea why they happen. F10 again. No, that one actually does the same effect as the, uh, as the previous one. Uh, that's why it didn't change, is it actually has the same effect. <laughs> okay, so uh, this uh, made the edges dark as well. So that one's promising as well. Okay, so those are, uh, are the two that actually showed up as uh, something that could actually uh, maybe impact uh, the uh, actual uh, effect there that we're trying to get. Um, so one thing that we can actually do is, uh, let's see, what can we do? Okay, so these two pieces are promising. They both use the uh, sampler too. Uh, which is going to be uh, one texture that's uh, probably the uh, edge texture since it's moving at a higher speed. So something's definitely related to uh, Sampler 2 uh, and uh, it's uh, used in a couple of different spots here. No way really to tell what's going on. Um, that doesn't seem super promising because we're only using the X parameter out of the, what we actually uh, calculate there instead of both of the X and the Y. Uh, same thing with the R2. So it's only uh, doing an X there. So unfortunately um, this particular spot doesn't really look like there's any way for us to uh, get to the uh, alpha for that channel. That's not part of this equation uh, at this moment because it's only using the X. Uh, uh, I'd expect to see something else in here maybe, but uh, no, no way really to tell. Uh, you can see that uh, some of this stuff uh, as it goes by, these uh, multiply instructions, uh, some of this is fairly obvious. You, you won't exactly understand what's going on, but this is a, a square root, that's a multiply, this is a move, this is a multiply add, our texture load. Um, so the basic instructions are uh, fairly explanatory. Uh, some of the weird stuff like these uh, dot products uh, don't necessarily uh, aren't going to be all that obvious. But for this part here, we can see that it's doing some sort of math on the uh, particular like texture that's like coming in. Um, so not exactly clear what that means. So anyway, uh, we have uh, Stereo Texture 2, or sorry, not Stereo Texture, that's a Sampler 2. So the uh, Sampler 2 is actually in use there. So we can come back and look at the uh, Sampler and see. So uh, it's actually Texture 2D, so it's definitely one of the three layers that are actually operating uh, within the uh, within the mechanism there. Uh, so not exactly clear. Can't see a clear path for uh, making that actually like work as far as that goes. Um, but uh, as part of uh, being the hacker and uh, you know sort of paying attention to like what's in here, even though we don't understand what's going on, what about this? Uh, just notice that Nvidia Stereo Fixed Texture. So this piece of code actually already has some sort of. Uh, some sort of uh, stereo uh, fixing pr with it as far as that goes, which uh, it's Unreal Engine, so apparently it already had that uh, uh, working at some point. Um, so uh, maybe there's already something in here, I guess, uh, as far as the stereo operation goes. Uh, in fact, actually, there's uh, yeah, stereo enabled. Uh, so if uh, stereo is enabled, uh, it could actually uh, do this uh, automatically, I guess. It could do some sort of an effects. So um, let's uh, follow that train of thought. Uh, since our texture loads didn't seem to pan out uh, uh, too obviously. Uh, so uh, constant register 3 uh, comes in as the uh, stereo register uh, load. So uh, there's a uh, where 3 is actually used. So this little sequence here is actually trying to decide um, if stereo is enabled, 
then do a texture load of uh, S1, which is the uh, S1 is the stereo fixed uh, texture. So uh, it's interesting that that's uh, going to be doing it. Uh, uses C23 for doing that operation. Uh, C23 happens to have our magic uh, 0625 number, so it's clearly uh, some sort of stereo-related operation, uh, giving further uh, credence to that. So um, this, anyway, is trying to decide if uh, stereo is enabled, do this section of code. If stereo is, is not enabled, then do this section of code. So uh, that's an interesting train of thought. We can actually uh, try that uh, as far as that goes. So let's go ahead and uh, comment these uh, pieces out so that uh, all of those are going to be... Oops comment out those uh, sections there. So now there's no question that it's going to run the code that would run if uh, stereo is enabled. So uh, this is going to be doing some sort of stereo fix. Uh, let's see what happens. Back to our kookiness. And nothing changed. <laughs> so I uh, guess that's how uh, things go. Just double checking. File's been saved. I would say that code is definitely uh, running nothing else is uh, commented out okay so uh that's uh part of the uh equation too i guess okay so um i'm gonna go ahead and uh, uncomment those pieces here but add this uh, comment that's a uh, nvidia stereo fix already uh doesn't seem to work okay so uh this uh, might have been uh, promising, but it doesn't actually seem to do anything as far as uh, the actual like, shader goes. So I'm um, not sure why that's true. Could be that uh, there's some other mechanism that needs to happen. So for example, the, uh, the sampler that's being passed in uh, maybe has to be initialized in some way, uh, something else that's going on that we don't have any control over. So um, still hacking about. Uh, but we can see that that actually has some sort of uh, impact on it. And also, uh, it's notable that uh, we at least now know that uh, V1 is related somehow to uh, stereo and position. So if we were to be able to move V1 somehow, which is what this code is doing, uh, adding and uh, multiplying, it's moving the X parameters uh, uh, as far as that goes with this multiply add. So V1 is somehow related to uh, the stereo texture. So let's go back up and look at the uh, input section. So uh, the input section is almost always uh, useful as far as uh, as far as that goes. Uh, these are the uh, inputs to the particular shader that we're looking at. Inputs and outputs, computer-wise, are almost always the most important part of a particular subroutine. Uh, the actual code itself is quite a bit less uh, useful than the actual inputs and outputs. So in this case, uh, we have uh, V0 as a texture coordinate, but now we actually know that this texture coordinate, number 5, is coming in uh, as an XYW. Um, don't know about the W versus Z, but anyway, it's a third parameter there, so it's three-dimension uh, uh, texture coordinate. So uh, that one is definitely related to the location of the shader uh, as far as that goes. So um, since this is relate, relate, uh, related to the uh, location, that means that uh, maybe we can do something with it in order to actually uh, affect the edge of, uh, of that particular like texture. So let's see where that's used. Uh, so we can see that it's used in the uh, stereo fixing code there. This uh, little sequence of code here will eventually become obvious to you uh, because you'll see this happen all the time for uh, stereo fixes. Um, this is a, a canonical version. Uh, so we can see that it's being used uh, two times. Uh, this instruction here and this instruction here. Okay, since we believe that uh, V1 is somehow related to uh, stereo fix and it's actually definitely related to that uh, texture that's on the uh, surface of the of the lava so we're looking at the v1 these are the two instructions that are actually operating here so uh, the idea for uh, another experiment here is that since this came in from the vertex shader as a legitimate xyz coordinate in uh, three-dimensional space where this is trying to decide like what to do with it or uh, fix it by stereo wise then another possibility would be to set that location to zero instead just like we uh, set the color down here to zero, if we set the uh, location to zero, then that has the effect of disabling it as well, but from a vertex uh, shader's perspective, not a pixel shader's perspective. Um, uh, instead of being in the 3D model, it'll go to location zero, which is uh, 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 essentially moving that into all of those triangles and compressing them all down into one spot. So uh, uh, same idea, different, uh, slightly different technique. So let's go ahead and try that uh, with these instructions. Um, let's go ahead and uh, make a copy of this. I um, always like to make copies because uh, sometimes I like to go back after uh, experiments don't pan out. Um, 
So <laughs> always, always good to keep the original code so that you can get back to what uh, it was supposed to do. So I'm going to uh, put uh, C200 uh, dub 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 just like uh, before. So that's our normal uh, C200 uh, 000 into uh, R30 again. So now instead of uh, V1 here, I'm going to make that R30. So the effect here is that we're going to say uh, whatever this thing previously was going to use, uh, it's all zeros now instead of uh, whatever the actual legitimate numbers were. Gets assigned into R1 and then who knows what it gets done with from there. R1 does some other math and reciprocals and something something. Um, but uh, if we set the location to zero, that, that will effectively make this input uh, uh, nulled out, uh, sort of a nulop. op Okay, so uh, do that for both these instructions that are actually being used. Um, And same idea here. We probably could just uh, reuse that, but I like to uh, make sure that the code is uh, clear by not leaving around extra stuff further up. Okay, so then this guy's instead of uh, V1 is going to be R30. So uh, negative zero doesn't make sense, but uh, won't hurt anything either as far as that goes. Uh, so in this case, it's uh, zero into there instead. So uh, the idea being that uh, whatever that V1 was being used for has now actually been uh, nulled out as far as this particular shader is concerned. Okay. So let's uh, go ahead and give that a try. Saved. Going back to the game. Okay, it's all blacked out. I'm going to put my uh, key back so it's back in operation with my nasty halos and everything terrible here. Okay, here goes nothing. F10. Ooh, what about that? I hope that you are as impressed as I am. <laughs> so, uh... The uh, net effect of uh, changing that is, is that we got rid of the uh, edge for the lava, uh, which is some sort of a flowing effect, uh, and it's um, supposed to look like uh, waves uh, lapping at the shore. Uh, but in our case, uh, get, getting rid of that piece of the lava actually makes it fairly good because uh, we no longer have that like little sub piece, but at least we still have our lava, and uh, we no longer have any halos, and it all actually looks pretty good. So. I uh, hope you like that as much as I like that. Okay. Okay, so that's a uh, legitimate actual fix there as far as that goes. Uh, here again, we are uh, disabling a particular piece of that shader. So now instead of disabling the entire thing like we were doing down here, so we won't disable the entire thing. We'll actually only disable this like one piece because only that one piece is the part that's broken. So I uh, hope that's clear. Uh, but doing this particular technique, uh, we can actually uh, get rid of the uh, broken part there and actually solve our nasty problem of uh, which one do we want worse, the one that makes your eyes bleed or the one that makes the game hard to play. Now we have a different operation that is actually uh, the game is playable and we still have lava. Okay. Okay, now that we're back here in the code, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this up a little bit uh, since now we actually know what uh, the uh, technique is that we want to use. So rather than uh, disable it completely, I'm going to use this uh, same logic here, but uh, I'm going to wrap it around the, our, uh, our fixing code here instead. So uh, this is going to be the uh, actual fix that we're uh, going to operate on there. And uh, we want to have it be able to uh, turn it on and off just like we did before. So that's why I'm uh, going to go ahead and uh, set this up that way. Here's our original instruction. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring the original instruction down. And we're actually going to add an else here instead. So uh, the idea is that uh, we're going to continue with the uh, operation that we had before. So um, if it's uh, equal to 0, then we want to disable the effect, which in this case we'll uh, use our uh, stomping on uh, V1 using our 30, uh, so we'll uh, stomp on the vertices. Uh, if it's not zero, then, then we want it to be on normally, so that's uh, run the regular code. So we'll leave that uh, piece in place. Okay, so uh, same idea as before. I'll go ahead and uh, clean this one up as well, so we can actually add the uh, else and if. But now we're going to make it uh, uh, this add instruction instead and make it so that it's actually like live. Okay, so now uh, that should fix that part there and we also don't need this uh, bottom part because that'll disable it all together so uh, clearly we no longer want to do this piece. Um, so uh, this comment is still uh, useful though so we can go ahead and take that. So we'll say disable lava because edges are way off. 
by disabling uh, input vertices. Okay, just a little hint for uh, when we come back to this later uh, and uh, things are very confusing and we're not sure exactly what's going on. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, check that to make sure that code works. Drop back into the game, got our skip list full of madness there, so the screen is all black. And press insert to uh, clear that list. Okay, I'm hitting F10, and it's up. Now if I put my key there, so now I'm hitting the toggle to uh, make it on off. So uh, on off uh, clearly works. That allows us to uh, take a look. I would say this one probably will go into the uh, other list, uh, but I'll do that later. Because um, this one is a uh, game-breaking bug as far as that goes. Uh, it's not really uh, something that would be on the uh, on the maybe list. This one is on the bad list. Okay, so it uh, looks pretty good. I think we've uh, got that all uh, working nicely. Okay, so uh, one last tidbit here. Uh, so we were talking about the uh, input parameters uh, as they come in from uh, the vertex shader. So now I've uh, previously found the uh, vertex shader that's associated with this lava. So this is the uh, vertex shader instead. And uh, you can tell that by this uh, VS30. So it's a vertex shader. This is our first look at a vertex shader. Now, uh, the vertex shader also has uh, input and output section as well. So uh, these are the inputs uh, for the uh, vertex shader. These are the outputs for the vertex shader. Now the outputs go to the pixel shader following our pipeline. Uh, and there's not necessarily a one-for-one -one correlation between the, uh, between the uh, uh, two pieces. Uh, so uh, for example, in the, uh, I'll scroll down here. So this is our input section for the uh, pixel shader on the left. And you can see there are four that are in there. Uh, the uh, vertex shader on the right has uh, six parameters actually instead. Now there's no guarantee that the outputs from the vertex shader are going to uh, specifically line up with the inputs for the pixel shader because the vertex shader can be used for multiple pixel shaders. So uh, some pieces of it definitely will line up, but uh, not all of it. Now if we jump down to the bottom uh, and take a look at the uh, outputs from this particular uh, pic vertex shader. So output 5 is actually the uh, location of where the entire lava effect is actually found on screen. That seems to be correct because it's in the right position. Now from previous experimentation I found that output 3 is in fact the texture that's used for the uh, specific uh, uh, edge effect that we want to fix. And now uh, looking at this, we can actually see that that's text coordinate 5. And in fact, that actually is the same input parameter for the pixel shader of text coordinate 5. So uh, output from vertex shader of 03 is in fact the exact same parameter as the pixel shader's input of V1. So anyway, uh, texture coordinate 5 comes in as V1, and so uh, the upshot is, is that you can fix this particular problem in uh, two different spots. You can either do it the way we did by getting rid of the use of V1 here, because the same parameter came from the output of the vertex shader here. So uh, that's what you can do here if you want. Uh, this particular uh, process does the exact same thing, but in the vertex shader. So it assigns null zeros to the output number 3, uh, which would come in here as 0, which would actually solve the problem in the same way. So uh, the reason that's significant is because you might need that when you go to the quiz. So the quiz is uh, go to the end of the demo. There's a giant worm there that's going to try and kill you, and the water will kill your eyes worse than the worm will kill you. So if you can figure out a way to fix the broken water, that would be splendid. Uh, you might be able to use this vertex shader approach. You might be able to use the pixel shader approach. So we have made it to the end of lesson five. Uh, I hope it's clear now the role that experimentation plays in uh, shader hacking to find out uh, what we can actually do to a shader and what the individual pieces of a shader might be. So it takes the uh, uh, code from just being a giant blob of uh, mystery into uh, little sub pieces that we can actually determine what uh, a particular like chunk would be uh, to fix a f an effect on the screen. Now you can see how the puzzle aspect of shader hacking comes into play, where this is a black box and we're poking at the black box to try and understand what individual pieces might actually do, which allows us to figure out the right spot and the right fix for a particular effect. So good luck with your shader hacking.